In our last video tutorial, we worked together to blend multiple exposures to create the image that we have in front of us. And uh, through exposure blending using Photoshop's HDR Pro, we've achieved a nice natural result that has all of the shadow information that we could need in the foreground while retaining all the highlight information in the sky. And so we've got a nice balanced image here in front of us. And so I thought we could go to the next level and show how, in the spirit of doing things quickly and easily, we could achieve a unique look with this image through processing. One of my favorite plugins to use through Photoshop to achieve that is a product from Alien Skin called Exposure 6. And as I open this image up in Exposure 6, Exposure 6 can be run independently of Photoshop, but we're going to launch through Photoshop, and I like that flexibility because it gives some masking and uh, further options. So there are uh, a ton of different presets to use here in Alien Skin Exposure 6, but this one that we've opened to, it shows the challenge with an image like that, this, and that is because there is so much texture information in the field in front of us, uh, things can get a little bit muddy very quickly. Now there's a lot of great options and, and you can take it to extremes. You know, this preset here, I can create a fantasy looking image, which looks pretty awesome. But uh, today I want to go to what to me is a very natural application for this kind of image. And that is to use a black and white infrared look. And here's a preset that I think looks pretty cool, but it needs a bit of modifications. I really like the uh, high contrast here in the foreground. I'm not so crazy about it here in the sky. And so, just a few quick things that we're going to do here to modify this preset. And there's a panel here on the right that looks a lot like Adobe Lightroom, and it's just as easy to use. And so here, one of the things I want to do is I want to pull back the highlights a bit. And so these patches here aren't quite so blown out. But as you can see, we're still really heavy here. But you may or may not be familiar with the fact that when you do a black and white conversion, the individual color channels really affect how a black and white image looks. Here, where we have a lot of greens and yellows in the foreground, we can see how that adjusting the greens um, really changes the way that some of those highlights look. And so here, I really like bright highlights showing up here. And so the yellow, which is the main color there, it can be a little bit overdone. And so we want to leave some of that contrast. So I'm going to put that slider somewhere about here. Now we can affect how the sky looks by looking here at the blue channel. We can see that the further left we go with the blues, the more that the luminosity in the sky is pulled down, but to an overwhelming effect. And so I'm going to slide that a little bit to the right and we'll find a happy medium somewhere up here. And uh, the cyans affect that a little bit. So I'm going to pull those up a bit also. And so uh, things are starting to look good here. It's a little bit heavy right here in this area around uh, the actual structure that really is kind of the centerpiece of what we're looking to. So I'm just going to go down here to the tone curve panel and I'm going to pull the slider channel just a little bit and open that up. Um, and so that we still have a nice balance between um, our foreground, still have those textures popping. Maybe we could pull open those yellows now a bit more to bring back some more of that higher contrast. And one final thing that uh, is worth doing while you're here is it is one of the easiest places to add um, good targeted sharpening. And so uh, here I'm just going to add a little bit sharpening. I'm going to bring down the radius a bit and so um, you don't have that over sharpened or halo look. But as we, we look in at 100% we can see how that things are nicely sharp and it just allows some of these textures to pop a little bit more. I'm going to click apply and it'll take a second or two for that to be applied. But here you can see very quickly a before and after. And what a, a great looking image we have now to where there is almost a sea of grass here with these highlights that are popping out. And that's only been achieved in a couple of minutes. And so um, Alien Exposure 6, I believe they have a 15 day trial for you to use it for free. And, and so you can get a sense for yourself. But it has become really one of my favorite go-to programs when I want to achieve a certain look. And after a while, I've gotten very familiar with what I can accomplish there. And so here you can see in just a few minutes how we have gone from our original image to something that has a lot of visual impact and something I'd be very happy, happy to share. So I hope this tutorial has helped you out once again and to go from that initial stage of exposure blending now to processing and creating a final product. If you haven't already, you can click like below and subscribe. Have a great day and thanks for watching.